Hey, what's going on everyone? You've been looking up since Venus and Jupiter have been uh, getting closer, nice and bright. Got some clear skies, I got a, I got a picture. I've been watching the movement. Look pretty cool. So, this is called conjunction. In case some new sky watchers are watching. That's what you call it. And that's when the two objects are on the same line, north-south line, meaning they have the same right ascension, and, and right ascension is the same thing equivalent of longitude here on Earth. <clears throat> and there's a couple of names, few names, for descriptions. It's the evening star after sunset in the west, and the morning star before sunrise in the east, day star, or some people like to call it. And you can suppose that, well, you can never see it, see Venus due south, unless the sun also is up. never opposite the sun in the sky either. However, Jupiter you can. The last week of October Jupiter was in opposition. Opposition, opposite the sun in the sky. And ever since then it's slowly been getting closer together, Jupiter and the Sun. Actually, it's the Earth's orbit taking us toward the opposite side of the Sun compared to Jupiter. But from our vantage point, our point of view, it looks like the Sun's moving slow east toward Jupiter. And Venus, that goes east with the Sun. And our, our orbit is due to that. And it'll pass Jupiter on probably the 14th. Or the 13th, or the 12th. The 12th, it wasn't, wasn't there quite yet. Now in the old days, way old, well there's several things that's been said about it. Jupiter is one name, the king of gods. If he visited Venus, the goddess of love, then some interpretations were that that was a sign for a royal birth. You know, an astrological sign in heaven or so for a royal birth. Well, that's an old time thought there. Let's see here. This is a picture of the moon that I got from a few days ago, and I believe that was a corona around it. I thought it was just uh, brightness through some light clouds, but I looked at it better, and I, I think that was a haze, a corona haze or something. Those are two separate shots, actually. Because the first time I saw the clouds, maybe, peeping through the clouds, and I looked at the sky real good, and it was pretty clear. And I went ahead and took the second one and then realized that's a corona. And here's another school of thought on Venus and Jupiter. It could have been the Star of Bethlehem, eh? This is an older article. From Indiana University. And, uh, it's talking about what might have been in a 
from what I just said. They associated Jupiter with the birth of kings and Venus with fertility. And the meeting took place in Leo the Lion, which the Old Testament associates with the Jews, Jewish people. And it happened near the brightest star in Leo, Regulus, which is associated closely with kingship. There's not been a brighter, closer conjunction so near to Regulus in the 2,000 years since. Hmm. Could this be the event that caused the group? Called the wise men to travel in search of a new king. And there's different views that they go through. And there's no consensus view. There's nothing marked in stone. Yet some have their thoughts. Some questions uh, present as many problems as they solve. And the question is divided into two parts, astronomical and astrological. Why did they associate it with the birth of Jesus? Four main suggestions. A close approach happened three times. They were not spectacular but a triple conjunction is rare and significant. The second suggestion, the conjunction in 2 BC described above. For this to be true, Herod must have died at a later date than is commonly believed. And this one would be assuming that he died in 4 BC. Third, an occultation, which is the eclipse of Jupiter by the moon, and the constellation Aries the Ram in 6 BC, which happened in daylight and would have hidden the glare of the sun. This relies on astrological interpretation with Jupiter perhaps representing the star of Bethlehem. Four, the fourth suggestion. Something different. A nova. In Capricornus, the goat, reported by Chinese observers in 5 BC. And a nova is an enormous explosion at the surface of a star that is similar to a hydrogen bomb explosion but much more powerful. The star temporarily brightens greatly, and that is what we see as a nova. After a few days, the star begins to fade and after several months it's back to its original brightness. Hmm. And they don't know how bright it was, but it appeared to the ancients to be a new star. The wise men apparently the star was noticed only by the wise men. No mention of a star in Luke's description of an angel announcing the birth to shepherds in a field. However, Matthew, when they arrived, they asked Herod, Where is he who is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. He didn't know what they were talking about and had to summon his advisors. And they told him that according to the prophecy, he'd be born in Bethlehem. If his birth would have been marked by a big event like a comet, there would have been an omen of great significance. The astronomical event that excited the wise men seems to have been significant only to them. This rules out the possibility of conspicuous comet. It implies they knew the stars. They were astrologers. Herod plays a part because his death positions supposed events. And there's the birth. September of 3 BC, Jupiter came into conjunction with Regulus, the star of kingship, the brightest star. Just a month earlier than that, Jupiter and Venus had almost seemed to touch each other. 
Then the conjunction between Jupiter and Regulus was repeated in February and May of 2 BC. And finally, on the 17th of June, 2 BC, Jupiter and Venus, the two brightest objects in the night sky except for the moon, came so close that their disks appeared to touch. And this exceptionally rare event could not have been missed by observers like the wise men. It doesn't mention how many wise men there were or where they came from. Well, we have the tradition of the three gifts. It goes to talk about how it could have took a while to get where they were going. About when Jesus was maybe born in spring or summer. Designating Jupiter, the conjunction of Jupiter and Venus as the star of Bethlehem, eliminates a number of problems, but probably neither is the last word. Little is known historically about the period when Jesus was born, but new information such as an archaeological discovery that precisely dates the death of Herod could provide a more accurate picture of what has happened. Well, those are just some thoughts. It does make you think, though, huh, what we were watching. It has meaning and significance. Oh. I didn't know if anybody knew any of those things. I had never seen this one before, even though it's an old article. I had read some along that lines. So. Just wanted to bring that to you, since this is what we've been looking and watching. What do you think about that? You believe this is what the wise men were following? I got a feeling that maybe it was, huh? I'm gonna let everybody go. Y'all have a good. Tuesday. I'm going to watch it good tomorrow night too and try and get another picture of it. If the clouds will permit. And uh, just so everybody knows, this was March the 12th. And according here, it said it got up to 84 degrees. Something doesn't sound right whenever I say 84 degrees on March the 12th. <clears throat> I might not like snow that well, but that don't seem right on March the 12th. What do you think? God bless everybody. Y'all be good. Watch that tomorrow night. It's going to look really good.